comic fam. Welcome. We're going to talk about some trending comic books. Let's get into it. Four years covering the comic books trending in the marketplace, some books are becoming perpetually relevant. These are the books that we talk about again and again, even without announcements of movies. Perpetually relevant books. Comic fam, I'm over here just chilling with the comic gato, reading my Alex Ross Fantastic Four full circle hardcover. Hit the like and the subscribe button and at the list at number 10. Call it some good spec. Number 10 on the list, Fantastic Four, Full Circle, the hardcover slipcase cover, only 3,000 made. All right, mine's signed it's by Alex Ross, It's not the slipcover one, but it's the one on the list. The, yeah. Sorry, Tom. But this one has made the list two weeks in a row. Now, the book has been released, the regular normal hardcover, the one that you were holding has been released officially this week. But the one that came out last week, only 3,000 made, we were reporting a last week average sale of $65. That has risen. We are now looking at $120 average sales with still a high sale of $150. Clearly, members want that classic Fantastic Four logo on this slipcase that is a monumental moment for comics because Alex Ross is back doing interiors, retelling what he has said, quoted, the best Silver Age story that was printed in comic books. So I think everyone needs to keep an eye out for these previews exclusives. Diamond Comics has been releasing these over the past few years, generally in relation to Comic-Con, San Diego, New York Comic-Con. But like over the last few weeks, we've actually seen a bunch of them get hotter in the market. Prime example, on the trending 20 last week, the larger list, which we source these from, we were talking about the amazing fantasy number 1000 Peach Momoko variant. And even this week, we have an alien number one Trevor Charest variant, which is a previews exclusive. It sounds like some comic fan members need to be up on their pull list looking through the catalog, especially knowing that there may be some exclusives that may be going miss in the community. Also, utilize Kotom 101 on the best comic app in existence who's cataloging these hot variants, Key Collector Comics. You mentioned the trending 20, the 20 comic books that we pick 10 of to make this list every single week. Keep up on the comic book industry. It moves pretty damn fast. Keys of the week. Even catalog your comics and get suggested pricing and so much more. Next at the list, at number nine, because of She-Hulk episode three. Number nine on the list, World War Hulk Gamma Core number Number one, this is the first appearance of Gideon Wilson, who is the brother of Sam Wilson. He also happens to be a lawyer and is seen in last week's episode of She-Hulk being interviewed talking about how he was Abomination's old lawyer. It's interesting to see them tie him in. Now, are we going to see the Gamma Core in the show? Are we going to see it in another Hulk spinoff? I'm not quite certain, but the fact that the Gamma Core is a group of people who are mad at the Hulk for wronging them in their own perception, it could very well be a long-term spec. We're seeing $4 average sales on this. There are only 10 9.8s and four 9.6s on the census and not any recent sales of a graded book. So keep an eye out for this one. An increase of 550% in copies sold since episode three drop. Next at the list at number eight, Batman, the killing joke, issue number one, it's a one shot. Alan Moore goodness, 1988, one of the best Batman stories of all time, one of the best Joker stories of all time. And there is a tribute being done currently at DC Comics that I suspect is spiking this book that is perpetually relevant. Comic fam, this is a term you guys are going to hear us say a lot during this broadcast, but if you've been watching us over the last few years, you will notice there are books that come back again and again that don't necessarily have anything to do with a new movie or anything. The Killing Joke is one of these books that has been perpetually relevant. Perpetually relevant. We talked about it because there were so many multiple printings of it, but even right now, first printings, we're seeing $100 raw. We're seeing $315 for a CDC 9.8 in August of this year. We we saw a signature series by Brian Boland, the artist, $774 in August of this year. 
The thing that blew my mind about this, I'm doing a little bit of research on grading. There are 9,500 of this book graded on the CDC census. That is a ton. And that's first prints that are being graded, not counting the rest of them. And there are 14 perfect tens. The last perfect 10 sale was $6,500 in February of this year. There's a ton of them out there, but this is just one of those books that is perpetually relevant. It is always going to be a book that people want to buy, that people want to spend and spec on, but the fact that we now have a new DC upcoming book that's moving this needle, it makes it even more relevant. 64 pages, one shot. Joker, Killing Joke is a legendary title. And this right here is being redone, kind of, with a new run through DC Comics called One Bad Day, where Batman goes against a villain, just like he does in The Killing Joke. But we have Two-Face slated, Penguin slated, Mr. Freeze, Catwoman, Bane, Clayfate, Raz Al Ghul, and most recently was the Riddler. The challenge? Make the villain on the inside be the worst villain in DC continuity. That's the challenge that Tom King took on. And with the Joker, the killing joke being one of the darkest narratives of the Dark Knight, how do you outdo that? Well, you retcon it. And that's what Tom King did this past week. Now, the Riddler version of One Bad Day came out a couple weeks ago, and I don't think a lot of people were in on it. And now, finally, as we see the new solicitations, we're beginning to see that they are really doing their best to make darker and darker versions of these Batman villains. We're actually seeing 124% increase in copies sold of The Killing Joke because of the logical start of all of these One Bad Day one-shots. And for those of you that don't really know the One Bad Day quote, comes from it is from batman the killing joke and we actually have the joker saying all it takes is one bad day to reduce the sanest man alive to lunacy that's how far the world is from where i am just one bad day and to take that one bad day idea even further tom king poses the question what if all of those horrible things the Joker did, kidnapping Commissioner Gordon, paralyzing Barbara Gordon, and potentially even worse, what if that was the Riddler's idea? Number seven on the list, Amazing Spider-Man 325. We have a McFarlane cover, and I'm beginning to believe that McFarlane covers are perpetually relevant. McFarlane's amazing Spider-Man run is absolutely perpetually relevant, especially when he's doing signings every single year. $10 average sales on this book. We have $325 for a CDC 9.8 that is down from the high sale of $420 that we saw as a heritage sale back in April. And you and Jim Mint even talked about this book it's your boy, on Mint. your runner's up list. Indeed we did. That's because the newsstand had a record-breaking sale. Last sale in 2020 for what direct market copies are currently selling for $325. Last week, we saw a newsstand sell for $900 wow. of this issue. However, the direct market copy is still under its all-time high, as you just said, with Todd McFarlane going down to Sarasota, Florida to visit CGC, the headquarters, to do a private signing. Members are trying to figure out what McFarlane keys to send out, and there are a lot of them that are selling now. So when McFarlane's doing a signing, we always see a little bump in the sales of his books. But I can tell you straight up that people are already keeping and holding on to McFarlane books. The number of times someone brings in a collection of Amazing Spider-Man and it's just missing the McFarlane books is constant. I almost never get the McFarlane. Constant. Dude, you were complaining about that today, man. I know. Like, yes, it was it seriously. Just happened. Today I had a collection come in and I'm like, God, all sure. your McFarlane's gone. It's crazy. But yes, people just know that those are the hottest books in the Amazing Spider-Man run. And if he's doing signings as often as he is, we're just going to see that happen even more. His signature is still valued very highly. He charges over $100 per. So, Keep your McFarlane covers as you acquire them over the year so that you're prepared for times like this so you're not buying books at their height when people are struggling to secure high-grade <laughs> copies of McFarlane covers to send to CGC. They're going to look gorgeous. You don't want to miss out on that signature, but you want to pay the best you can. At the list at number six, Star Slayer number two. We're talking about The Rocketeer. Now, I don't want to think about Star Slayer being a perpetually relevant book, but realistically, kind of is, it, isn't it is this run we keep talking Gru about. Uh-huh. Grimjack. Yep. 
and the fact that we've got first appearance of Rocketeer in Star Slayer number two. $20 average sales, $295 for CGC 9.8 just this very week, but these prices are still down from the highs that we were seeing last year in August. They made an announcement last year in August that there was going to be a new Rocketeer movie coming out, and the fact that D23, the big Disney con, is going to be happening. We are hoping that we will see some new announcements about a Rocketeer movie. The book hit $566 in 2021. Now that it's selling for near half is a reason why Nick's Picks, the category found on the app Key Collector Comics, if you pay for the service, there are recommendations of Key Collector when things are dipping. And this book is down 40%. 40%, but D23 is really close. This may be the last opportunity to secure a book on the low before any announcements are made. So, warning, this is a bit of a gamble. If you throw money down now and nothing happens at D23, this is going to be a movie we're probably not going to hear about for quite some time. There's so many delays. However, if something does happen at D23, you're going to be glad you had your full service paid for on Key Collector Comics. A 200% increase in copies sold since last week. And really, even though the numbers may not be as high as some of the other books, this is still a book to be on your radar. Another book that should be on everyone's radar because it is perpetually relevant, perpetually number relevant. five on the list, Amazing Spider-Man number 36. This is the September 11th, the 9-11 issue. It is all black, absolutely gorgeous, and every year around the anniversary of September 11th, we see this book spike just because of people wanting to remember the day. Remembering the day indeed. And every time this book comes up on the list, whether it's this one or one of the others that we cover, because the days are different when we cover trending lists, this book always reminds me of the amazing accomplishment and the astounding amount of pressure the creators of this book must have felt and went through for the very short time to get this pumped out. This right here is an amazing feat. The fact that it was successful, um, the fact that it is renowned in the collector space, but also remembered as a major moment in Amazing Spider-Man and Marvel Comics for covering such a tragic event but doing comics right by indeed covering it. The tragedy of September 11th, we have to keep in mind that in New York City is where all of the superheroes Everything. live. It's where Marvel headquarters was. Hell's so Kitchen. you have all of these people who, yes, we've got Daredevil, we've got Captain America, we got Spider-Man. All of these guys are absolutely from the five boroughs hanging out in New York City. So the fact that you had all of these writers and artists who were in New York dealing with the tragedy, deaths of their friends, deaths of people that they knew. I mean, just an amazingly shocking time. They pulled this together and released such an amazing commemorative issue. Even now we are 21 years on seeing $85 average sales and a high sale of $195 for CGC 9.8. Multiple high times we have seen that $195 sale and people are just buying this book because they want to commemorate this in the most positive way they can. An increase of 433% in the last seven days as we approach the anniversary. At the list, at number four, Batman 89 Number one, this is a book that came out in 2021 during a paper crisis. We're still kind of dealing with the ramification of said crisis. However, you are a big Tim Burton Batman fan. Oh my gosh, yes. Batman 89 is such a fun thing because I remember watching the Tim Burton Batman when I was 10 years old, I mean, I liked it so much that I was the Joker for the next two Halloweens. Jack Nicholson Joker, absolutely. But Tim Burton just really had such a great impact on me and my Batman fandom. So when I heard that they were doing a comic book with DC that was kind of doing a new version of Tim Burton's universe of Batman, I was super excited. Now, we're not going to see a whole lot more of the Batman 89. They've already finished these six issue miniseries, but the reason why we're talking about this book is that they're going to be releasing for Batman Day, Batman Returns and Mask the Phantasm in the theaters. You can go and see them on the big screen. And that means all of a sudden we have people who want to buy these comic books. Celebrating Batman Day, an increase of 144%. This book is selling for $15 average sales and seeing high sales of $71 for a CGC 9.8 at the end of August. Mask of Phantasm? 
That is another book that is perpetually relevant. Mm -hmm. We have certain series that continually come up on the list because of happenings in culture. And the most popular of said series are ones that are typically redone. How many times have we talked about Doomsday? Oh, yeah, a lot. You know, it's starting to feel like Groundhog's Day here. But this is information that you need to know on the hunt. There are certain books you have to just always constantly know approximate value on. Mm -hmm. Because year over year, they are holding firm. Oh, man, this Invincible cover that's coming out for the Mystery Mail call. If people are not signed up, they have got to do it. It is one of the hottest things I have ever seen. John Boy Myers, wraparound cover, four different variants, one per box going out at random, comictom101.com. I also got to mention the other one per box. When I showed this guy the final Carla Cohen, Vampirella, year one, issue number one Uh, variant that I set us up for, going out one per box in the Mystery Mail call in September. Your jaw freaking dropped. Oh my gosh. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone- he was like, he stopped talking. He's like, oh, wow. Every once in a while, we get one of those variants and I'm like, ah. And the awesome thing is that both the main variants this month, yeah, they made me do that. All right, comictime101.com. Support what we do. We're doing this list for over four years straight and we're not skipping one week. Athos to number three, courtesy of She Hulk. Episode three, at the end, we have Defenders number 17 debuting in 1974, the first appearance of Bulldozer, Pile Driver, Thunderball, and The Wrecker. Oh my gosh, The Wrecking Crew, I swear. Oh, $65 average sales, a high CDC 9.6 for $608. If you guys watch the She-Hulk, these guys are goofballs. They look terrible. I mean, She-Hulk's even making fun of like, oh, did you rob, you know, an Asgardian? Like, really? They're, th- th- this is not a Wrecking Early Crew. Early years. I, I do not feel any fear. <laughs> <laughs> when I have these villains coming up to me. And She-Hulk didn't either, and that's why they had to call the big boss back at home and say, we couldn't get it! An increase of 667% after they made an appearance, although right. very funny. It's I very enjoyed funny, yes. seeing them, which I find very interesting. I Imagine the comment section is going to blow up here. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about the Wrecking Crew? I want you to win this Invincible number one Tyler Kirkham Omni-Man variant. Um, when was this $608 high? So the $608 sale actually happened a full month before the show was released. And if you look back historically to August of last year, we saw a $1,027 sale for a 9.6. The same grade. Not a Mark Jewel or anything? It is not a Mark Jeweler or anything like that. So if you're looking at maybe these characters are popular, maybe these characters are funny, they're definitely not resonating as much as the potential did. Although the fact that they were talking to their boss makes it seem like they are going to be sticking around for at least the rest of the She-Hulk season. And who is their boss they're referencing? Could it be the leader? I want to know in the comment section below at the list of number two, Thor 411, Al Ewing Gold balling it? Really, Al? Night Thrasher? Night Thrasher, indeed. We have Thor 411, which is the first appearance of the new Warriors, which features Night Thrasher for the first time in comic books, seeing $30 average sales and a high sale of $300 back in July. But we have Al Ewing on Defenders Beyond, where we're finding out so much about Blue Marvel. Great lead of this run. We also have America Chavez joining the narrative. We're finding out the uh, origins of the Celestials, and they just brought in the Beyonders. And a character that's getting so much love and attention by Al Ewing, Night Thrasher. So Al Ewing was tweeting all the way back in 2019 about how much he loves Night Thrasher. He loves this and guy, dude. how he's so much cooler than Batman. He said that, He yo. straight up did. And Listen it's, to the quote. Just say the quote, Russ. This is why Night Thrasher is cooler than Batman. Batman's obsessed with his image. His entire methodology is based on trying to be scary. Anyone laughing at him breaks that. Hence, his arch enemy being the Joker. Batman can never be seen to be uncool. Thrash does not care. I've never heard Al Ewing talk. I'm curious how accurate that that's, was. That's my Al Ewing impression. Maybe an apology is needed. <laughs> I love me some Al Ewing. However, clearly... He's got a soft spot for Night Thrasher. We love you, Al Ewing. And this book be spiking because clearly he is being utilized more, but also he is being looked at as a resource that's akin to a Tony Stark. Someone who is not just rich 
in wealth, but rich in knowledge. Someone who you give a call to when you are dealing with the weird, the impossible. This dude's a genius. He's being built as a genius. Now, Night Thrasher, with all of his appearances and his two miniseries, is probably the least perpetually relevant <laughs> book not on this entire perpetually list. Perpetually relevant. Comic fam, hit the like. Slap the subscribe button. We are actually about to get to one of the most perpetually relevant raw and graded books on the list this week. We have Spawn number one. We have Todd McFarlane's independent title, the longest running independent title debuting in 1992, courtesy of CGC doing a, another signing. This book be piping hot. $30 average sales, $225 for a 9.8 as of this month, but we're seeing $170 sales. We're seeing $200 sales. Really, when you see a 100% increase in copies sold, and it's not because of movie rumors, which have come and gone so many times, it's because of a signing because people love the Todd Father. A lot of people aren't willing to just spend the $30 average on a raw copy. You want to get a graded copy that's already a 9.8 because if you're going to crack it, send it in to get it graded, you want to make sure you're getting the most pristine copy. It was a very highly printed book when it first came out from Image Comics in 1992. And a lot of these were loved and read by kids who were 12 years old in 1992. So this is the type of thing where I think we're seeing a lot of the people who want to spend the $120 to get Todd to sign it to make sure they're going to get the best looking copy possible. What are you sending in to CGC? If you are, I want to hear in the comment section below. And the most important thing that you can do is, as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Join myself and this guy on the best new app to buy and sell collectibles. I am headed to Portland tomorrow morning in the AM. I'm going to drop some exclusives that I haven't even announced yet at Rose City Comic Con. Join me on whatnot. Dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long. I'm bringing my dad, Comic Pops. I'm bringing the Golden Age Guru. I also have two other videos for you to check out. Enjoy them. We made them for you.